Oprah Winfrey's life is indeed sweet. From the phenomenal success on an international level of her talk show, to the headline-making weight loss program, to the creation of her own entertainment empire, the name Oprah Winfrey is synonymous with success. I'm very curious. Are you aware of Canadians as a distinct audience? Are the questions or the attitudes unique to being Canadian? Or are problems problems? Problems are problems. But, and, and I normally don't look at the addresses. I don't. Because problems, if you pick up a, a, a letter from Toronto um, versus a letter from Tallahassee from some woman who's having problems with her children, problems with her husband, problems with her own personal self-esteem, um, it's, it's the same. That is what is so unique about our show, Brian, is that regardless of where you're from, what your uh, personal background may or may not be, um, your feelings are all the same, and that's what we do. We hit feelings, and I, you know, and I know how to do that because I work based based on based on my own personal instincts. I know if I'm feeling something, you know, I'm not unique to the planet. That somebody else is also feeling it too, and that's what works for us. Now here we are, with a new five-year contract with King World, five more years of the Oprah Winfrey oh. Show. You have all of these projects in development. Did you want to make a five-year commitment to keep the show going? Is it important to you that it be there every day? I do think that five years probably will be it for me, and then I want to grow to the next level. But uh, I just do it because it feels good to me, and it feels right, and it feels like I can do some good here. And I really do think that the show does a lot of good. Uh, you know, we get accused of being tabloid television and sensational and so forth. But what I really think we do more than anything else but serve is, is we serve as a voice to a lot of people who felt up until perhaps my show or some of the others that they were alone. And what we do is, in a small way, inspire, enlighten, encourage, as well as entertain. And I think that there is nothing better you or I could do with our lives than to help in some small, sometimes subtle, sometimes not so subtle way, help lead people to a better understanding of themselves. You cannot do more than that. You cannot. Whether it is, you know, for me through my television show, you through your television show, or through film, or through medicine, or through some other art form, or as a teacher, you cannot do more than help a person come to a better understanding of themselves. And that's what I do. And that's why I will continue to do it. By the way, I have to compliment you. This is a new Oprah Winfrey. Am I lit well? I hope so, thank you. You're carrying your own glow. Oh, thanks. That's nice to hear. Why, have, why, I, why have you literally created a new woman? Oh, Brian, I hadn't thought of it that way, but uh, I just got tired of complaining about it. And you know, my, my message to, to everybody out there who wants something very badly in their life, either go ahead and get it or shut up about it. Um, and, and, and I, I keep a journal. I've kept one for years. So it's so interesting to look back on the woman I used to be uh, and the woman I've grown into. And for years, it's an ongoing theme in all of my journals since, uh, I mean, if you go to a journal December 6, 1978, I'm sitting at home alone. I'm 15 pounds overweight. And it progressively got, I'm 25 pounds overweight. It's December 1980, you know. And uh, I was just going over some of that and writing again in my journal about, mm, I think it was right after Brewster Place. I just really can't stand myself. I can't believe I've let myself get this big. I look in the mirror and I can't stand what I see. And when am I going to take control of my life? When am I going to get control of my li life? Because for me, um, being overweight was out of control. I could control every other aspect of my life. I'm doing very well in my company and, and doing films and so forth. But the weight for me was 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 represented um, a failure to gain control of a part of myself that needed it. And so for me, you know, everything, it's just like the air has been cleared for me. I feel not only so much better about myself, but just about the way I live my life. There's not something that is now controlling me. I'm not controlled by a bag of potato chips, which, you know, or, or a stuffed potato, which I love them. I love, I love. But it's not like I, I think that if I don't have this now, uh, I'm going to just, just die. I was really very much an addict, very much a food addict. I really have come to be more compassionate about drug addiction as a result of my addiction to food, truly. I mean, there have been times even uh, 
while I've been basically uh, on, on a medically supervised fast is what I've been doing, when I craved food and thought that if I just had a piece of fish right now, my life could change. Realizing all the time, and so what I have grown to do is, is now understand that uh, I was obsessing about food. Realizing that you eat the fish and it's done in five minutes, and what have you done? Nothing. It's just a piece of fish. It has nothing to do with your character, with the person you are or can be, and so forth. So I've gotten it under control. Finally, it's been such a struggle. As one of the busiest people in the world of broadcasting and filmmaking, with a life that's committed five years in advance to work. Is there time for you for a personal life? Yeah, there is. Stedman uh, is vice president of a PR company in uh, North Carolina, which means that we are now a commuting relationship. And you know, Brian, it just sort of, it just sort of slipped up on me. But it's working out very well, very well. You know, it's the best. I'll tell you what's the best about it. Wow. Trust us. <laughs> well, this is a publicist's nightmare. Uh, <laughs> Don't look over there. Wait a minute. She's going, no, don't. Don't, don't. look over there. No, the best thing about it is, is that when you, when, when, let's say, um, five, six days passed and you sort of haven't seen that person, it just makes the uh, reunion that much more significant, should I say. I understand. Thank you. You're very welcome. It makes a very meaningful get-together upon his return or upon my you know visiting there I mean there have been times you know when I really what a wonderful way to define passion Oprah. yeah it makes a uh, makes for very no wonder you bought Toni Morrison's <laughs> novel beloved yes because I'm about passion. It's a word yeah. passion. Passion. passion passion while we're on passion I've always wondered when Gloria Steinem told you that extraordinary story about the prostitute who went to jail and in jail began, was it, she studied law books, mm -hmm. became a lawyer. Uh -huh. What has happened to that project? Is that one of the things in development? No, it's not in development. You're not going to let go of it. I'm not going to let go of it, but it's not in development. I mean, there's so many other things going on. Because, you know, see, I hate to sound like one of those uh, ho uh, Hollywood types who they go, oh, yes, we're, we're in development with this. The fact of the matter is, there's so many things going on in my life that I'm concentrating on one thing at a time. And right now, um, a Beloved has a stronger priority with me than uh, anything else does. Beloved and Kafir. I mean, even the, the I'm doing- Kafir boy. Yeah, Kafir boy. Uh, I have something, quote, in development with Quincy, but, you know, by the time we get the, all the deals done, the paperwork and all this, you could have already done several other films. So um, I basically concentrate on one thing at a time, and I'm trying to create a, a base so that I have producers and other development people who can be doing one thing while I'm doing something else. But it's very difficult. I'll tell you what's very difficult. Uh, is to surround yourself with people who are trustworthy and creative and responsible, who care as much about the work as you do. And so that's what I'm trying to do right now, because you cannot succeed without it. None of us progresses um, by ourselves. And so much of what I've been able to accomplish has been because I have surrounded myself with loyal, trustworthy, dependable, creative people. But I handpick them one at a time. So I'm building a base, but slowly, because they just don't, you just don't get a resume from somebody that is going to be a life partner for you. And I pick my people like life partners. I mean, the, the, the people I hire, I, I expect to die with them. You know, Oprah, someone told Barbara Streisand how difficult it was. They said, you know when an actor of the stature of Warren Beatty, Robert Redford, Dustin Hoffman says, acting is not enough. I want to produce, I want to direct, I want to create, I want control. The feeling being that when a man does this in Hollywood, they collectively stand up and say, boy, he's got balls. Right. When a woman does it, they say, what a ball breaker. Yeah, what a ball breaker, what a bitch she is. Have you found that sense of opposition about here comes that tough, broad Oprah Winfrey. She wants it all. No, absolutely not. You know that? Oh, absolutely not. I, 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 and I know it. And I absolutely know it. Uh, I would venture to say, it's, it's very difficult to talk about yourself, but I would venture to say that the perception is exactly the opposite. Um, I think that the kind of work we're trying to create uh, at Harpo, my production company, um, will be very much respected in the industry. And I'm not perceived as a ball breaker because I'm just straightforward and I deal with truth all the time. I don't pretend to be something that I'm not. 
if I don't know the answer to something or I don't know how something is done, I mean, I don't feel that, oh, they're going to think I'm, I'm, I'm incompetent because I don't. Because this is one of the things I realized that just really has opened my uh, vision to go on to greater and greater things. I mean, whatever, whatever you all have seen that I've done now, this is only, only the beginning. I suddenly realized that the heads of Paramount, Universal Studios, Fox Television, they didn't know any more than I did when they started. They didn't know a bit more. The only difference between them and me is they've been doing it longer. And they had to learn, and they had to make contacts, and they had to, quote, network. They used their friends, and they used people that they knew that were good. And they started, they started, you know, this way, and got that way, and that got that way. That's how everybody has done it. That's how it's always been done. And so to think, oh, I don't know if I can do it, is ridiculous. Because the thing, the thing that you have to learn to be is sensible and sound, but with a vision. And if you do that and surround yourself with good people, you can do anything. Why do I think, with all I know about you, that you wouldn't be sitting here thinking and feeling the way you do and are if you hadn't gone to Ethiopia? Um, I, I find that Ethiopia, to me, uh, going to see, uh, to do a project with the you know, starving children in Ethiopia two years ago, you know, was... Uh, a profound experience in my life, but not like what, what you would think. It didn't do for me what I thought it, it would do, because the fact that I was there was because I was already moved to do something. And so when you actually then see it, it was so startling to me because, you know, I'd been watching on television scenes, you know, tapes of children, flies in their eyes and, you know, swollen bellies. Actually being put there was like being in another world. What I vowed to do then, what I vowed to do, was to use my life to do what I could, not to try to make judgments on other people about what they should do, but to use my life to be, in many ways, what I call a light in the world, to try to, to lift people up. And I think that that is the, is, is the personal decision everybody has to make. I can't tell you what you need to do. You can't tell somebody else what they need to do, but you make the choice for yourself. I want to use my life as a, as a source of, of, of lifting people up. That's what I want to do. That's what I do every day on my show. That's what I will do in film. That's what I will, you know, take the money that I make from the film and the show to do, to lift people up and to keep refeeding that whole process. I am about triumph.